Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. We have a new PC that I'm working with, which is great because I'm staying home a lot. Everyone should still be staying home a lot. It's very hot outside. I'm not going outside anymore and I'm just playing The Sims. And so because of this new setup, my uploads are going to be a lot more consistent, which is awesome. Yay! Today I'm starting a new series that I'm calling Movie Magic. Get excited, this is movie magic, boo. I went to film school, I studied set design. I lived in Los Angeles for three and a half years. And then when the pandemic hit, the film industry basically just came to a stop. Like no one was filming anything anymore. That means I have the time, the space and the technology to be able to film a lot more. And we're going to be starting a series on movie sets. Oh, I love the movies. And so the first one that I decided to do a video on is the house from sharp objects now i'm assuming that the overlap of people who play the sims and watch uh crime shows crime happened in the show Stop. the overlap might not be huge but you can still watch this video if you've never seen the show i'll be putting little reference pictures up in the corner so you can see what i'm referencing especially if you've never seen it but basically the show takes place in a town called Wind Gap, which does not actually exist. They shot the scenes for Wind Gap in Barnesville, Georgia. The big giant Victorian house that we're gonna be building is actually located in Yukia, California. And then the interiors they shot in uh, on a soundstage in Los Angeles. So we're gonna go ahead and get the build started and then I'm gonna tell you a little bit about um, building sets and basically how you match the inside to the outside and a couple of different things like that. So I based the outside of the house based on pictures of the actual house. So a couple of screenshots from the show showing the outside of the house, but mostly just a ton of pictures that I found for just, just write-ups about the house. So the actual house as it exists, not as it exists in the show, but as it exists in real life. So basically what they did for the show is they looked at the outside of the house, they plotted out the geography. I, I saw a couple of drafts that the production designer or set designer did, which I can show you right here, that show how they took into account the outside shape of the exterior of the real life house and then sort of tailored it for how they wanted the inside to look like. If you go in on Zillow or something and see a listing for this house, you will see that the inside of the actual house looks nothing like the sets that they ended up building on a soundstage in Los Angeles. And so that makes it a little bit difficult to recreate sets in The Sims because all the production designers, set designers, art directors, and everyone have to do is make it believable that the outside of the house and inside of the house are the same house, but they don't need to make everything match. So there are some rooms missing in the show that exist in the actual house, such as like, the entire backside of the house, and I had a lot of trouble finding actual pictures of the backside of the house, but I did eventually find them. Um, the entire backside of the house has this like giant porch that goes off to the side that you see in the actual show because every time that the characters drive up to the house, they park underneath this this crazy, as you can see right here, this this side thing, porch thing, this just this giant weird porch. And then on the back, you can see me building it right now. It's got this sort of jutting like sunroom type porch situation that you never see in the actual show. This video is gonna be in two parts. We're gonna do the outside, then we're gonna do the inside of the house in a separate video because it took me 12 hours to build this. 12, at least 12 hours to build this house. You're wasting your time. So we, we just took the inside of the house, matched it to the outside of the house as, as well as I possibly could. And then there are a couple of rooms inside that where I had to sort of make up what they were. For example, Alan and Adora, th the two characters that live in this house, or there are three characters, but the two adult characters that live in this house are a married couple that live in, sleep in separate bedrooms. We never see the inside of Alan's bedroom. So I just sort of ended up having to make it up. But the outside of the house, the colors, I wish that there was a better color to match because it's sort of a, in, in this build, it's sort of a pale blue, but the bright blue of the house in the show is just yeah. gorgeous, oh. gorgeous. Oh, and, okay. and it pops and it's exciting. And what's interesting and is that the house in the show is blue. The house in real life is yellow. Now, every single picture I've seen of the house in real life is still yellow, 
And if you look it up on Google Maps, it still appears to be yellow. So there's a good chance that the production paid to have it painted and then repainted back to the original yellow. There's also a chance, and I don't know this for certain, that maybe they just turned it blue digitally. My boyfriend also works in the film industry. He's a, a visual effects compositor. So I asked him if it would be possible and, or if it would make mo it, like money sense for them to actually turn the whole house blue digitally. And he said it would probably be cheaper to paint the house, but if they weren't allowed to because it's historical or something, then they definitely could in every single exterior shot, turn the house blue digitally. It would cost a lot of money. The effects are very expensive. But it's also something that people do all the time in film is that someone makes some tiny arbitrary decision. They're like, oh, it would make a lot more sense for this to be red because red symbolizes passion or whatever. And then a whole team of people, they spend like a million dollars or more having a whole team of people turn that tiny thing in one shot red. So if you guys ever see something that like pops like that and you're like, there's no way that they turn the Statue of Liberty purple or whatever, just know that someone did that very, very specifically for a reason, to get some sort of reaction out of you. And they spend a really, really, really huge amount of money to do it. But the film industry has a huge amount of money, except right now, because no one's doing anything because of the pandemic. So that's why we're building in The Sims. Anyway, yeah, so there are, there are a lot of shapes in this house that make no sense as far as inside to outside. So, so if you if, if you watch the show and you adored it and then you watch my build, especially when we get to the inside of the next video and you're like, that doesn't look anything like the house is supposed to look. I'm sorry, like I, I did as good as I could, but if you guys have ever built anything real in The Sims, like you're like, I wanna build my house or I wanna build my dream house or whatever. And then um, you re you'll realize that the scale is way off. Like, because the, the Sims, you have to build walls based on, you can't just do like 15 feet. You have to do like five grid blocks, five, you know, a very set amount of blocks. It, uh, it doesn't always do like a one-to-one -one translation, but the, the blessing, the blessing of all of this at this point and for this series to actually be able to work is that you can place doors and windows. You can all place doors and windows now. So. It's, it's just a blessing. This, this would not be possible without it. But um, what I would love from you guys is if you would please in the comments, tell me what set you'd like me to build next. Just, it could be anything. It could be a show I've never seen before because we're all bored. We're all just sitting here at home, not doing anything. So I can watch the show. Or maybe if I've already seen it, you know, like I've, um, I've already tried to build the friends apartment and I didn't have as many packs as I currently do. I still don't have all the packs. So don't yell at me if, if there's like something perfect for this house that you don't see, because I already don't have the pack. I have all the expansion packs, don't have all the stuff packs, hardly at all. Um, not, I don't have all the game packs. So sorry, but, um, yeah. So if, if you guys have anything that you want to see, please tell me because I'm not entirely sure what to do next. Um, the only reason I really wanted to build this house in particular is because it, they shoot so much of the house. Like I was, I was scrolling through all of the, all of the episodes just to, to find pictures of the house. And that's why next video you'll see, we're just going to be flying all over the house because as I'm scrolling through, they're going, they're going into different rooms. And so I'll be doing a little something in this room and then I'll go to the next room and it might be a little obnoxious, might make you throw up. Please don't. Um, but anyway, um, oh my gosh, what was I even talking about? What was I even talking about? Don't have all the packs. Don't have, I have no idea. In the video right now though, what you're looking at, what you're actually looking at is, um, the landscaping, which was really fun because the landscaping of the house was like a lot of bushes all sort of crammed together in the front of the house, but it still looked very nice and tailored. And there are a lot of scenes where you actually see Adora gardening, which means that they, she personally takes care of a lot of stuff around the house. Um, I'm sure they have a landscaper. Um, you could see her gardening. It was that scene where she like pricks her finger and she's like, you made me bleed. And everyone sitting at home watching the show was like, no, you made you bleed, you weird woman. It's like boohoo. Uh. So yeah, the landscaping was fun because I really enjoy uh, landscaping houses where you can just sort of throw bushes everywhere. 
I you can see it on this channel. I'll link to it somewhere. But I did a medieval build of a house where I decided to make it really overgrown, and so the entire lot I put down individual pieces of grass. It was the most time-consuming, possibly stupid thing that I've ever done. It was really fun. And if you guys give me a suggestion for uh, what to do next, what movie, what show, what whatever, it doesn't even have to be a movie or show, just something you want to see. If you give me a suggestion of what to do next and it's not huge like this house and it doesn't take me 12 hours, then I'll do a let's build instead of a speed build. I personally like watching let's builds better than, more than speed builds, like a lot more. But when something takes 12 hours to build, I'm, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna do a let's build because it would just be a lot of me sitting there going like uh, and like looking at my laptop and then looking back at my pc and then being like uh, like it wouldn't be fun but if it takes me like two hours easy easy peasy we can do that um we can chat about it we can talk about it i can tell you guys why i chose the things that i chose if you even care or you know it can just i don't know you just tell me what you want to see and i'll do it as long as it's building in the sims so here we go so uh ooh, actually what i ended up doing here there were a lot of curved paths and curved like i don't love the look of just terrain paint on the ground unless it's supposed to be very natural but if it's like a driveway then the edges of the terrain paint are always fuzzy so you always want to outline it with something and i've seen people go into debug find like a little bag of flour and then make use the little bag of flour and replicate it a hundred times to um which is really annoying to do especially if it's debug because you can't eyedrop or debug items so you have to just keep clicking and placing but if you place a million little bags of flour it makes this nice path outline uh and so i started to do that and then i was like this is dumb this is impossible i can't do this i don't want to do this and so i ended up using that really short fence thing uh and I honestly have no idea if your Sims can step over that very short fence. It would not surprise me if they can't because it is still technically a fence. It's just very short. So I don't know how usable this build actually is. And especially on the inside to get all the furniture in there because the house is just stuffed with furniture. I had to just put a bunch of furniture everywhere. So I don't actually know if the Sims can get through. And also, and I will complain about this more in the next video, I guess. Or I'll talk about something else that's actually entertaining. I don't know. There are, they show you two bathrooms in, in this house. This is a five bedroom house at least, at least. This could be an up to eight bedroom house and they only ever show you two bathrooms. And according to the floor plan that the production designer, art director, set, set decorator, um, drafts people put together or not. According to that floor plan, there are no bathrooms downstairs, which I thought was stupid. So I ended up putting one in there in one of the rooms. You'll see it later. I don't even know why I'm talking about it right now. And I will link to the second video uh, on this video later, but I'm gonna sort of spread them out. Okay, I do wanna explain what I'm doing right here because I thought this was a really, really good idea. Um, using terrain paint to make it look like the lawn was freshly mowed. I thought it was a very good idea. Well, you'd be wrong. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I was really heavy handed with it and it's really hard to draw with a mouse, especially because I, I'm left-handed. I use my mouse right-handed because that's just what I grew up doing. And so using it left-handed feels really weird, but it also means that I can't get really detailed with the terrain paint. Um, and so I did all of that terrain paint in the front to make it look like freshly mowed grass. And it looks kind of stupid. It looks like, it looks, it looks like a mistake. And so later I will be erasing all of that and then doing it a little bit more lightly, I guess. So lightly you can barely see it, but I'm gonna, I might be doing that a lot more in some other builds because I think it's a really cool idea. I've never seen anyone else do it. Let me know if anyone else has been doing it forever and I just have been ignoring it. I thought it was fun and cool and a good idea. I don't know, y'all might think it's stupid, that's fine. Well, it's not stupid, it's smart. Oh, and the windows, you can all place them now, but you still can't place two windows on the same tile because they sort of clip into each other. So the windows are not going to be accurate in any way whatsoever. And then also when we get inside the house, sometimes there will be a window between where I need two walls, like a wall to go. And then there's a window like right in the middle of it. Um, so I'll be deleting windows from the inside and it's just the way it is. Sorry if you guys are like, I don't know, 
disappointed. <laughs> Please don't be. But yeah, so the um, the outside of the house. Okay, if you go, if you're wondering what I'm doing here with the rug, I'm trying to make in the back of the house. They had this giant sort of circular. I'll put a picture up of it right here. But they have a giant circular grassy area. It's actually where they held the like Calhoun Day thing, sort of in the front and the back. But most of it's in that circular area in the back. So I just took a rug. I wanted to make a fence circle as well as I could. I took a rug, upsized it, traced it with fences, and then that's basically it. And then here we go again with the freshly mowed grass in a circle. And I think it works a little bit better this way when it's a lot lighter. And then I just tried to do use like the actual circle brush to make it more actually circular. I don't know. We put a path in and I wanted the paths are gonna, I didn't actually ever put a sim in here. I don't play test my builds because I'm not really sure why you would play in this build unless you're, I don't know, unless you just think it's cool. Um, it is up on the gallery if you do want to play in this build, but it is not play tested. I would not play in this house, mostly because it's too big and I really don't like playing in big houses. I especially don't like playing in multi-story houses. Mostly because I want to be able to like see all my sims at the same time. This this build is mostly just for fun, but if you want to play in it, that's great. But it is not play tested. It's sometimes it's good to get a sim in there just for scale, just so that you can see like, oh, this path that's supposed to be one person, a person's width, like a, a sidewalk is as big as a car or something, uh, which is probably the case with all of these paths and sidewalk things. If I could redo this, I would go back and put a couple more sort of those dead rose bushes because of symbolism and like metaphors and like if you saw the show you get what i'm saying if you guys are interested in watching the show i highly recommend it it's on hbo so anyway this is the end of the video i did a lot of talking about the inside of the house which you guys didn't even see which you will see in the next video so i don't even know what i'm gonna talk about in the next video but either way please in the comments let me know what house I should do next. If it's smaller, I'll do a let's build. If it's huge, it'll probably be another speed build, but that's fine. I'm here for it. I'm stuck inside like everyone else. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Goodbye.